Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Darth Viking Ironside here, and today we are going to take a look at my new zoo that I just finished yesterday. So, without further ado, we're going to get right into it. So, what I did here is I just took the new Oceana fences, put it around a rock, and made it look a bit rustic. Now, with this sign, I used I used one website, I can't remember the name, but I will put it in the description when this when I upload it. A little backstory about this zoo. It's was made as you can see, 1966. So, what I wanted to do was make a zoo in the Outback grasslands for every animal that's in game right now for the Oceania. From Australia, New Zealand, Tasmania, you name it. And a little somber, little somber uh, moment here. I wanted to dedicate this zoo to the Irwin family because I am a huge fan of Steve Irwin and his love for animals, especially his love for his home country and for animal conservation. So this again, is a zoo dedicated to the Irwin family. So let's get started. So as you can see here, I just, nothing too special. I just used the Australian wood uh, planks and pieces and I wanted to make it look pizzazzy. So I put the Australian continent sign on the doorways. So as you walk through here, you pay your tickets, get inside, do your thing. And as you walk through here, your meet, your met, excuse me, with Lucky the Kangaroo. I always loved this statue. Thought it was very neat, made out of scrap pieces of metal. That was very neat. So, come down this way, and you can go to the Outback Gifts. And through here, you can do grab all sorts of types of gifts. I will also link all the workshop items I used in the description. So you all can enjoy everything that's in here. This is one of my favorite pieces of decorations I got off the workshop. I decided to put a Megalania skeleton right here as the centerpiece for my gift shop. Since I am a, I'm a big fan of prehistory and paleontology, so what better to have the skeleton of one of the most fierce animals to ever roam Australia? You can even buy some fossils here to take home. And just a little warning, there's going to be a lot of different ways to get in uh, how the heck you just fix the wall. <laughs> um, there is a lot of pathways going to different parts of the zoo, just so there's not so much congestion. And speaking of congestion, I also have the zoo closed down so it doesn't lag like a son of a gun. So, 
that is just a few bits of the gift shop. Again, I got I post, got these pictures off of Google and just put them on and modified them a bit and there you go. You've got some nice beautiful pictures. So I'm gonna take you guys through every habitat I done step by step. And ones that I've done first. Now, you'll find that I didn't do very much backstage stuff, like, so hiding the gate so it doesn't look like an amateur made it. But I was having a hard time trying to make this habitat for the wombats. And again, these I got off off Google and I just decided to make them. Quite honestly, I think I like using this technique of making my own type of signs just so it looks like I made it. Let's see if we can catch a glimpse of one of the wombats. No, that's a rock. <laughs> but yeah, oh, yes. Uh, before we get to the next habitat, I'm going to show you guys the other. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to show you guys this first. I think they're here. And this is my little animal exhibits. And it has all sorts of stuff from all over Australia and fossils that could be found in Australia. This was kind of difficult to make. Trying to get the right angles and the building was a pain in the butt. But all right, yeah, here's the cassowaries. Oh, look at that. <laughs> One decided to come up and say hello. And as you can see in the back there, I used one of the new viewing domes from this past uh, pack. I have to say, this is probably the best thing that Frontier's ever done. Thank you so much for that. So, we come over here. Oh, yes. A little critter sign that I made with a couple Tasmanian devils. We will get to that hap we will get to this habitat in a moment. So come through here. There's all sorts of stuff that you can find all around the zoo. And people complaining so much about the thirst and hungry I had to have a bunch of vending machines all over the place but anything to keep the visitors happy but even though I worry more about my animals than the humans but yeah I know that may sound awful but what can you say I'm an animal lover so this is my restaurant that I made called Outback Bar and Grill. So, as you can see, you come through here, and you would come through here. Actually, you know what? I'll take you guys inside here. So, here's one of the many exits. There's a little bar I made for people that want to get out of the sun. Actually, I probably should have covered that, so it looks a bit more Hey, Can't think of the word. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to stay inside when it's raining out, 
Or if you want to enjoy a nice night in the zoo, come sit here, have a drink, maybe get a burger. And then here's the other dining area. I tried to use as much of the Australian pack as best as I can to make it look very more authentic and not some that was just placed there and it looks out of place. I really like what I did here with the tiles from the... Was it the North? Yeah, North Africa pack. I'm pretty happy with what I did with this. Probably one of my favorite uh, parts of the zoo. But um, there are many more things in this zoo that I really like. We'll get to that in a bit. So, we're going to go back this way. Showed you guys the cassowaries. I, I got some inspiration off of one YouTuber doing Planet Zoo videos. I can't remember his name. He done a fantastic job with a habitat for some bats. And I tried to recreate it in my own way. Even though it looks like it could be a little bit better. But this is my first time trying to do this. So kind of a trial and error kind of thing. And the flying foxes. Probably one of my favorite type of bats. So damn cute. A little backstage area for people. Oh yes, and for the little critter house, I decided to have like a small backstage area. For all the zookeepers. And such. Come through here, and this is the koala jungle. Ouch. Just got slammed in the face by the door. Ow. I really liked what I did with this. This habitat for them, even though it seems a bit rushed. I wanted to make it look a bit dense. Kind of like the Australian rainforest. Or temperate forest. A little funny story. When I was making this habitat, I forgot that I had this sign upside down. And when I was going to check on the koalas again, I noticed it was upside down. So, a little funny story there. So, what happens here is it goes all like a big loop. And I thought it was very nice I'd do this. It gives more people to walk around the habitat and see the koalas. Another entryway to the viewing domes again. I thought I wanted to have like a nice little cave or something. A little plant coming down. So come up here. Now I wanted to have like a nice overlook of the saltwater crocs. One of Steve Irwin's favorite animals. And as you can see, it's just a big lagoon. I'm pretty happy with what I did with this habitat. Pretty nice. So we come over here. And up here is just another viewing area for the salties. Almost won the habitat. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I feel I've done a good job on this habitat for the saltwater crocs. Now over here, I wanted to try something different. I wanted to do an above ground pool for some platypuses. Now, this 
was very difficult. But I... This, this habitat grew on me as I was building it. There's a little, little one right there. But... I swear, these platypuses breed like rabbits. He's insane. So we come through here. And I wanted to have just something for the guests to snack on while they're walking around this area. In a little story here, I wanted to have one half of the zoo very tropical and jungle looking for all the more temperate and jungle looking animals. And then as it gradually merges into the grasslands or desert. And you come over here. This is a more below ground viewing of the little penguins. Again, this is another habitat that I'm pretty happy with. And these little penguins are probably the most cutest birds I've ever seen. But one thing that really makes me laugh about them is they kind of sound like uh, the Geonosians from Star Wars. So when I first heard them, I'm like, wow, they sound like... Is that a Geonosian? <laughs> yeah. Moving on. Come over here, or actually, there's two ways you can see this habitat. I wanted to have guests to see two habitats pretty much next to each other. So you can take a look to the salties right here, and this was one of my favorite, well, I got a lot of favorites here. This one was probably my most favorite habitat to build. And it's the wallaby and red, the redneck wallaby and the red kangaroo. I had, this was probably the greatest habitat I've ever built because I wanted to have like a more open grassland and try not to use so many trees, even though I wanted to have like a few scattered across the habitat. Because I've seen so many pictures of kangaroos and wallabies in more open grasslands and I wanted to have something more kind of like that. So moving on, come back over this way. There's many more parts of the zoo we'll get to in a minute. A little info stand. Get another above ground view of the little penguins. Oh, a couple little ones right there. And as for like the fences and everything, they're all made by me. I wanted to use a lot of the pieces from the uh, conservation, the Australian, and the Oceanic packs as best as I can. So there's a mix mash of everything in these builds that I've made. Moving on. And I think if I remember correctly, this is where I have the kiwis. Now, just like uh, my other densely pop, uh, densely populated uh, habitats with plants and trees, this one I really wanted to make it very dense for the kiwis because I know I've seen pictures and videos of them in very dense jungle, and they were running through the underbrush. So I wanted to try and recreate that. I think I did a good job. Oh, there's one. Now if we go on the other side here. I wanted to do a little more 
open areas and tried to have the habitats not being so close to one another, even though that was almost impossible. This is another habitat that I enjoyed making. It took me a few hours to place every tree and put it in the right spot. I thoroughly enjoyed this one. This is the emus. I made it half jungle, or half bush, whatever you want to call it, and half open grassland. So, come walk the, oh, come and look over here, you have more open grassland, just like the red kangaroos and the wallabies. I wanted to keep it more open, so they have more place to run around, and make it look more like it's their natural habitat. And that's what I like to do with my zoos. I want to make the animals extremely happy. Have them in a more big habitat. Even though it may not be very realistic. Even though it should be realistic and more safer for people. But I believe in animal welfare as best as it possibly can be. So I like to have my zoos be almost like animal sanctuaries. So you will see most of my zoos act just like that atmosphere of sanctuary. Animals in more wide open spaces where they can repopulate and hopefully be released back to the wild. Because that is my goal for these zoos to make... Animals that are on the verge of extinction have a second chance at life in all my zoos. And most of these animals are either injured or need to be rehabilitated. That all sort of things. None of these animals are taken from their natural habitat while they're healthy or anything. They... Most of my animals, I like to think, are all either need to be rehabilitated or they're healing from an injury by either getting hit by a car or anything like that. So I just want my animals to be extremely happy and comfortable in all their habitats as best as I possibly can. Now over here is the Tasmanian Devils. Going back to dense jungle. I, again, saw a lot of pictures of open and densely populated jungles of the Tasmanian Devil. So, I kept it somewhat like that. And the little story of this habitat. If you can see in the back here, this is a dried up waterfall. And right below is the pond where the my Tasmanian Devil's tend to really like playing in water. I hardly see them on land. So, got a very aquatic Tasmanian devil. Now, for everyone's favorite uh, selfie animal, this happy, smiling quagga. See if we can catch a glimpse of one of them. Oh, there's one. Sleeping. I hope. This habitat was kind of tricky. This, again, it was another open grassland. Getting into the more grassland and deserty areas. Wanting to not put as many trees in the habitat. Because I am a major treeaholic. Trees and rocks. So, um, what else can I talk about? Oh, yes. As you can see here, these are roadways for the staff that can drive around the entire park after hours, feeding the animals and going from habitat to habitat, making sure the animals all have their needs met and they have enough food and such. 
if we've got enough time, I will show you guys the backstage areas for the staff and everything once I'm showing you all the animals. So, come over here. Now, I know they were not originally native to Australia, but I took the dromedary camels and put feral camels into a, my Australian zoo. Now, a little backstory about this habitat. The zoo does, from time to time, what is going on? <laughs> from, excuse me. From time to time, my zoo will occasionally take guests and ride out into the outback to see more animals in their natural habitat. And they will ride camels. Or they will take trucks or anything that can help them get around and go see the animals in their natural habitat. So that's pretty much what these camels are here for. It's just for beasts of burden, but also some of them are also retired. So they spend majority of their time here living out the rest of their lives happily in their little house. Now this was the last habitat I made. Was for the dingoes. Now for this one, it too also has a story. I based it off of one of the national parks, or one of the greatest parts of Australia called Alice Springs. I wanted to have this be represented of that area specifically. So this entire area is for the dingoes alone. And it's at least, I, last I checked, it was 4,000 square meters. Yeah. They must all be in the back room. And yeah, as you can see, if you could see right there, I have like a gate that staff members can get into the habitats easier for trucks or anything to help them feed or uh, tranquilize any animals if they're sick or anything and bring them to the vet. I honestly wish uh, Frontier would do something more like that. Have it more realistically to have like bigger animals not be carried in such small boxes. Yeah, it's a little funny joke, I guess. So, now that is pretty much all the animals in the zoo. Now I will take you guys through a nice little uh, area of the staff buildings and such. Oh yes, this is also my other restaurant called Alice Springs Cafe. And I like what I did here. I tried to have it more in the jungly setting, like in Alice Springs. And it was the first time I ever used uh, Plaster roof piece. Roof, yeah, excuse me. <laughs> Can't talk to them. Uh, I used uh, roof plaster pieces to make a roof that wasn't as like as a traditional roof or anything like that. So as we move on, normally I see other YouTubers that do. Uh, Planet Zoo videos, they don't like, uh, they don't show the staff areas or anything like that, but I'm kind of different that way. I like to show what I did also behind the scenes, not just what I did for the animals. Now, as you can see here, there is many different types of vehicles to help the animals all over the zoo. But these are the staff trucks, painted the color of the zoos color. I really like what I I found this off of the workshop and when I saw it I'm like damn I have to put that somewhere. So, a bigger little garage or hut for the other vehicles 
If you can see there, there's a forklift right in the back. And again, all of these I got off of the workshop because I was, <laughs> was a little too lazy to try and make my own stuff. I'm creative, but I'm not that creative. This, I really like the fuel tank for all the vehicles in the zoo. And here's a couple uh, capture and release uh, cages. You'll find that I put a lot of uh, capture and release vehicles throughout this entire staff area. A little scene here where I was uh, having one of the staff going to drop off an animal in the quarantine because they were either sick or they were hurt. Now, a little, another funny story. This is my trailer that I made to live on campus at the zoo. This is my own creation that if you guys are interested, I will happily put it onto the workshop for you all to enjoy. But, uh, yes. This, I like to, I like to be close to my animals as much as possible, so even if that means living at the zoo. Because I, that's just how much I love my animals. I like to be at close quarters with the animals as much as possible, so I'm ready for anything if something comes up. So you come through here, it's another entryway to the staff area. I have a lot of veterinarian places just so things don't get clogged up for animals that become sick. Little bulletin board for animals and who's sick and who's not. And I also staff are allowed to stay at the zoo to and they can stay overnight and sleep here if they wish. Everything around here. Little rest area. These are all pre made uh, uh, Australian uh, staff buildings. Because I just love the design of these. Because I'm just a big fan of them. Just like how they're made. It's gorgeous. I have a couple plates here. So that's. Uh, That's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this little tour with, for the first time, me ever doing uh, voiceover so you can better understand what is going on here at the zoo. So again, I hope you all enjoy this video. If you feel like you like this video, leave a like, comment, maybe subscribe for more content. Because it's really helping me out, guys. Even though I'm a small time YouTuber and I only upload when I feel like it. Or try to. I try to put out content for all of you to enjoy. But, uh, I hope to get back to making more videos soon i just been really busy with uh, uh, work and stuff personal stuff so it's been really it's really tough trying to put out videos for you guys to enjoy so i hope you can understand but again hope you enjoyed have a great day and don't forget Long live the great Sith Empire.